creation was successful. The starting credential is in a4x.json. Uh, and the message says you're looking for a file called secret.txt, which is owned by a secret user. So as we've done in previous levels, one of the things we'll do is we'll test the permissions on the on the credential that we have uh, uh, access to. We start the, the level with. So uh, let's run this, this test permission script. And you can see that functions list, functions uh, locations list, compute instances list, logging. We have a, a set of func uh, a, a credentials here, or permissions that we have access to. So like the previous levels, we can see, well, uh, what functions do we have access to? What are the, the whoops. Um, Oh, I have to activate this token first. So, whoops, I skipped a second. So that's the credential. That's what the credential has. But I'm going to activate it uh, in order to uh, make this particular cloud shell in environment uh, use uh, that particular service account. So I've activated the service account to get myself uh, access to this compromised service account, and then I can run the 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 command using this service account credential. So now I'll list the the functions I have access to. And it says I have an A4, I have a single cloud function here. Um, so because I have the cloud functions get, um, no, just a list. So I can actually invoke this uh, function. And typically these functions have a format of, um, if I do a curl, of HTTPS colon slash slash and then the region dash project ID. So the region is US Central One and the project ID is this Thunder CTF demo uh, and then cloud functions.net and then the name of the trigger or the name of the function, which would be this name right here. So that's just the standard format of all these cloud functions that Google Cloud deploys uh, for you. Uh, and if you curl this, uh, just like in the A3 password level, you'll see, hey, there you, you don't have permission uh, to get this URL. Uh, it's a 403. It's expecting basically an auth token in order for you to um, uh, have access to this. And so we could do... What we did in the last level is attach the bearer token by printing an identity token. Um, so let me do that. Um, so in in the headers, I can specify the authorization bearer token um, to be um, this uh, the the output of the print identity token command, uh, and this will allow me to hit this endpoint authorized by the A4 access service account that starts this level and then from here it says oh um uh, so i've auth and then basically it's querying the a rest api is basically a rest api to access this storage bucket and you can specify a file to read from this storage bucket if you gave this uh this trigger a file parameter so that's what we're going to try and do uh next is like hey let me try just try and read some kind of random file. We don't we don't have the ability to list all the files in this storage bucket. So, uh, but let me uh, let me just uh, read some random file. Uh, one of the things that you'll note is that there, we this particular service account has access to the logging, and so if we access this cloud function and then look at the logs, then we might be able to get some information about that. Uh, the the project and so the idea is to trigger maybe uh, an error condition that would uh, lead to a log entry that we can then see the C so that that's what this next thing is going to do I'm going to say file is equal to foo.txt uh, and then I'm going to try and access thing and it says hey this this is an error couldn't handle this request because that file probably doesn't exist on that on that particular storage bucket So if you recall uh, on the test permission, so we generated some kind of error, we have access using this credential to the logging uh, backend. So the logging entries list is one of the things we can do, and we can 
um, we can do some, you know, getting getting the the log usage, the log entries as well. And so one of the things that we'll do is uh, the the errors that are specific to cloud functions can be accessed from the command line using the functions uh, command. And so there's a logs subcommand of G cloud functions, and we're just going to read these log entries to see what is uh, what is in them. And so you can see uh, function execution started, function execution exited with particular code. And if you scroll up, you can see, hey, you know, here's here's that error message. The request failed. Um, but as one of the uh, parameters of this, so this is the, the last one we sent in that caused a crash, uh, as part of the logging infrastructure of, or the logging that's being done on this cloud function, you see that uh, a log entry is emitted, but uh, one of the things that we ask web application developers to do is to make sure that you're not logging sensitive information. And in this particular case, it looks like the bearer token of this cloud function, um, an access token, is being emitted in log entries. And so this gives you a different set of permissions uh, than your initial access account. So the access, uh, the A4 access uh, credential allows you to access the cloud functions and the logging. But when you invoke the function, the function itself is running in a second, uh, a different service account potentially. And if in trying to access this storage bucket, uh, the error message has the bearer token that the cloud function uses to access the storage backend, then you can, with this uh, access token, assume the role of the cloud function and see what it has access to. So we're gonna we're gonna take this bearer token and uh, the test permission script that we have given you. Uh, we'll also test the permission using this token um, just by brute forcing this token against all the different permissions that a cloud project might have. So that's what we're gonna do next. Uh, we'll do a test permissions and then test permissions can take a token uh, an access token as a parameter, and it's going to just brute force this access token. And as part of this access token, you can see that you have a different set of permissions that you have access to, including setting the metadata on any compute engine instance. And so one of the things that we have talked about in lecture is that when you give the, have the ability to set the metadata on a compute in instance, one of the things that's stored on a compute in the metadata of a compute instance are things like SSH keys. So in reality, when you have this permission on compute instances, you can basically hijack any compute engine instance that's running in this particular project. Uh, and that that's basically the next step of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to see, well, let me see if I have access to any of the compute engine instances. And um, that was one of the things in the, in the initial in the initial set of credentials. Uh, if you recall, I do have the ability to list uh, basically compute instances and be able to get access to them. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm just going to do a G Cloud compute instances list and you can see there's an a4 instance this is its ip address the internal ip address the external one um i can basically do a describe on this thing a4 instance uh to get all uh whoops i needed uh, um, basically, you can get all of the information out of here in terms of its, um, uh, so this is the full information on that instance uh, that you can pull out of here. Okay, but we have so with the with that token that we exfiltrated from the log entry, though we have the ability to set the metadata on this particular instance because it's uh, given as a project wide thing, and so that's what we'll do next. We can use the set metadata uh, REST API call 
on Google Cloud to basically add an SSH key to this particular instance. And so uh, the first thing we need to do is generate an SSH key that we'll be using, um, generate a, a key pair, an SSH key pair, a private key pair and a public key pair, and then to use the set metadata REST API endpoint to add the public key piece of that key pair to the metadata of this instance so that we can then SSH into it. So that's basically what we're gonna do next. Um, so the first thing I'll do is do a key generation. So uh, SSH key gen, uh, and I'll name, I'll put the private key uh, in a file uh, and I'll call it A4 uh, key. Uh, and then I'll make it an RSA key with 20, 2048 bits. And then I can just basically use no, no passphrase. Uh, so this, this is the private key public key pair. And then as part of this, uh, and if you want to use this key, one of the things you'll have to do is reduce the permissions on it to be read-only, user read-only of the private key in order for you to use it. But then this is the public key that we want to add to the compute instances uh, using the, um, uh, we want to put this thing in the metadata of the compute instance. And so one of the things that, that the uh, the walkthrough gives you, if I can pull that up here. Um, is the ability, so th we're just giving you the format of this because it's, you know that the format of this command is immaterial. We're gonna hit the REST API. We're gonna use the token that we exfiltrated from the logs to basically upload this SSH key that we just generated. Uh, so we fill this in. This is, this is the curl request we're gonna construct. Uh, this is the API endpoint to set the metadata on a particular compute instance. We have to fill this in with, with, uh, with the information that we got in the previous commands. Uh, we fill this in with the access token we exfiltrated from the logs, uh, because that's the one that has the set metadata permissions. Um, we basically uh, need to uh, basically supply the metadata fingerprint, which is uh, in the compute instances description uh, command that we, when we did the describe. Uh, and then we're going to attach the SSH key that we just generated. So we'll pull out the uh, the public key part in the .pub file, and then this command will add that public key to this particular uh, compute instance. Uh, and this is, an, this is a, an example of what you'll be uploading, and so that's basically what we're going to construct now. And so I've cut, cut and pasted this command uh, into this notepad because we're going to we're going to incrementally. Uh, fill this in. So the project uh, is is this thunder is my project up here, which is thunder CTF demo. The zone that this compute instance is in is US West One B. So when I do a um, In a second, whoops, let me go back here. When I do this compute instances describe, um, you can see that this instance is actually running in US West 1B. So that's where I'm going to fill this in. Uh, it's in US West 1B. Uh, and then the instance name, uh, you saw this up here, it's A4 instance is the name of this uh, compute instance, so that's what I'm going to put here. Uh, so I'm going to set the metadata on this instance, uh, so it's just specifying the name. Uh, in, uh, in order for me to do this, I have to present a token that uh, has the set metadata permissions, and so that's the part of the logging um, Uh, command. So when we did this logging, this gcloud functions logs read, uh, you see that this was the act, this was that access token that basically had the set metadata permission. So I'm going to fill that in here into this access token. Uh, and then I need to supply the instance metadata fingerprint, which is basically in the the description of this instance in order for me to set 
So, uh, so this is the fingerprint of the metadata that I'll uh, copy and paste as well. And then what is the SSH key I want to add? And so I have this here, an A4 key.pub. And so I can supply this thing as um, as the SSH key I'm going to use. OK, so that is the command, the full command of uh, uh, that I'm going to execute using this curl. And this should add this SSH key um, using this REST API endpoint. Whoops, I think I got the metadata wrong. So I have to supply a correct metadata fingerprint. And so the, let me, let me, I think I copy and pasted the wrong metadata fingerprint. Uh, so let me list this thing again. And the metadata is, oh, okay. So here's the metadata field. Uh, this is the fingerprint that I need to supply in order for this command to work. And yes, I cut it, copy and pasted the wrong one. So now let me copy this curl, curl request. And this should set the metadata on that compute instance, which is what I'll do next. And then you can see this has been successful, um, where it has added this SSH key that I just generated to that virtual machine. So let's try an SSH into it. Um, so uh, let me get the let me get the IP address of this, uh, so I can. Um, I can use the external one, uh, so I'll, I'll copy that here, and then I can do an SSH-I, uh, and I can use this um, whoops. I can use this A4 key, and then I'll SSH as Ubuntu, because that's how I added the key to this uh, virtual machine. And then I can use that IP address. And so now I have access to this Ubuntu instance, uh, A4 instance. Uh, I'm in home Ubuntu. Uh, and then if I look around, uh, you can see that secret user is here. So this is just up a directory. So if you ls slash home, uh, see if you can go into the secret user and that level is looking for secret.txt. Uh, and so this is the secret that you would take the screenshot of uh, for your code lab. And so that solves the level. And you can see how uh, the pivoting around the you know log, en log entries that haven't been sanitized allows the adversary to move around in your cloud project and eventually get something that uh, they weren't supposed to get access to. Okay, so that's the the solution of the level. Now we want to go and we want to look at the audit trail. Um, like what? How did the? Uh, if you're an analyst and you're trying to figure out what this what this person did on your project, uh, you can look. All you have is the audit trail to look at. And so that's the next part of this uh, this exercise. And so one of the things you'd want to do is just make a mental note that this uh, this thing ended at. 1040 so we we're looking for entries in the in the log in the log data uh before 1040 and so i'll go to the logs explorer in order to to then do the rest of this a4 error so we're, we're we first ask you to examine the logs by severity um so if you look there's just a ton of log entries here uh and so you're trying to find needles in haystacks a, a lot of times and one of the things that you can do is you can filter based on severity and so if you just want to do notice errors like uh notification errors and so here's here's where you have a notice that the some some error happened in a in a cloud function uh and then some some notices that a hey, instance metadata has been set. And so this is a pretty good uh, sort of uh, summary of 
of important errors. Another thing that you can you can do. So just showing the different errors in your in your uh, log entries is what this code lab is asking you to do. And then you can uh, see what happens when you filter on uh, error logs. Uh, so in, in this case, there are 127 errors. Uh, and then eventually you'll want to, so invalid SSH key entry. Uh, so this is an error of trying to, um, that if you recall that first post uh, didn't work because uh, the fingerprint was, uh, didn't match. And so that's what this error is, is giving me. Um, and then you can see other uh, error messages for, for attempting to set metadata on these instances. So that's basically what, um, um, th that's basically what we're looking for here. And so the, the crashing, uh, there's an initial, if I, if I click on error and I click on cloud function, uh, one of the things you'll see is that remember when we uh, clicked the cloud function and we gave it a file name parameter where the file didn't exist and that exfiltrated the actual uh, access token. So you can look for errors of cloud functions and see the output of those. And that's basically where you see this bearer token being exfiltrated in the log files. Uh, so that actually is the, um, well, that's basically this find token exposure event. And so this is where you can see how that that token got exfiltrated. Uh, the other thing that this code lab is asking you to do is to find the set metadata log event that actually added the SSH key into the instance. So if you clear out this log explorer filter and you basically zero in on VM instances and uh, you click on notices, you can see where the set metadata calls uh have happened and so it was the last one that actually was successful because we failed a couple of times uh and then you can actually see what got added uh and you can see the uh the, the result of the of adding these entries And uh, for this code lab, they're asking you for this, the name of the service account that was used to perform the operation, as well as its IP address. And so you can see the principal email uh, that was used is a4funk-sa. Uh, so this is the service account that's running the function. Uh, we started with the A4 access service account, but then uh, we found the credential for this cloud function service account that's running the cloud function. And so that's basically the answer here. And then uh, by looking through the log entry, you can find uh, the IP address uh, that this thing came in from by just expanding out these, uh, these entries and uh, scrolling through and finding the authentication info. Um, and well, this is the, the service account that, that was being used. And then you can see the request came from this IP address, which is the IP address of the Cloud Shell instance. And that's basically uh, the, the rest of this uh, thing. And then the user agent, which is somewhere in here as well. Um, this, this curl, it was used to, to, to do the set metadata. Okay, so that's the level. I hope you found this uh, helpful as you do your exercises.